they adjust. So now we've got all the sealant on the sill ready to receive the frame. Um, we, we need to flip this actually first, make sure the interior goes to the interior. Yep. So why don't we go ahead and do that? So it is pretty heavy. It's a little heavier than your folding system. We've got it in front of the opening now. Yeah. We want to lift it up and put the nose on the front and tip it in in one clean swoop. Right, because okay. of all the sealant. Yeah, you don't want to disrupt that sealant. You right. want to just put it nice and easy over the top of the sealant okay. so it spreads and creates that really good contact. All right. Tell me when. Yeah. Okay, now tip it in. Flush with the outside. Flush with the outside. Now, during the install, we may need to tweak this. You know, we don't know how square this opening is. Right. What's for sure is that our frame needs to be perfectly square, level, and plumb. Right. Okay? We'll go through the process of, of determining that. What's your reveal on your side? All right, so it's important to put this right in the middle. So your gap on either side should be pretty much the same. So I've got about three eighths to about a half an inch. I'm, I am at three eighths. You're right there? Maybe, right. yeah, I think so, we're good. So that creates enough gap for your backing rod and sealant at right. the front and some shim space as we screw it off. Right. Okay. We've got all our pre-drilled installation holes. It's want to shim behind those fixing points so we don't get any rolling of the frame. It stays nice and flat. Um, same on the head. We do shim the head on the multi-slides, okay? Okay. It's a lot less subject to sagging because it's not hanging from the top. Right. It's all the weights on the bottom, yep. okay? Now, on this particular unit, as we know, it's got a screen frame. Uh -huh. Now, that screen frame was attached prior to putting in. It concealed the interior screw tab. So on these types of systems, I recommend gluing it down or epoxying it down and just using the front installation tab, okay? Otherwise, if we didn't have a screen, you could put screws in both the interior and exterior screw tab. Right. Okay, so there's multiple ways you can do this. We prepared the sill, we know it's flat, but we're gonna put a level on it through installation, make sure it's dead flat. Uh, these are sliding doors. The doors are adjusted with a gap at the bottom, so the seal makes contact with the sill. So we need to make sure this sill is nice and dead flat. So we've now got our frame in the opening. Yep. We've got our nice even gap on either side. Yep. We put our packers underneath. Shims to shims. You, you Americans. Yes, we put, uh, we packed out underneath the screen to bridge that gap, that quarter inch gap. Yep. And we're ready to go. So uh, keep your hardware box handy. It's got all your screws in it. I've pulled them out. Your frame installation screws, uh, your sill installation screws, depending on whether it's a concrete slab or wood. Okay, we've got blue concrete screws as well as wood screws. We've got our level handy. We've got our shims ready to shim out the fixing points on the jams and head. We have our drill guns um, with a long drill bit. Uh, depending on the header, uh, some of those parallams can get a bit tough, so it, it pays to pre-drill prior to installing the screw. We do need to make sure that this frame is square, plumb and level. Yes. Okay? Just like the folding, we need to spend our time on this, getting it perfect, making sure there's no twist in it. Um, so laser level. Yeah. I love to use a laser level to get that perfect. You can also use cross strings to make sure that it's got no twist and uh, a level. We'll start on the jams. Um, what we wanna do is make sure we get the jams plumb and level and make sure that our sill tab is still on the sill so it gets a positive, uh, positive bite. We'll start over here. Bubbles perfectly in the center. Again, it's, uh, it's good if, it's, um, if you've got a, a couple of guys, one holding the level, making sure it's nice and straight, and one guy putting the screw in. Tell me when. Okay, go for it. Okay, good. So why don't we go, um, we'll go over the other side. Okay. We'll get that side in, and then we can just screw in off the whole front. Okay. Okay, that's it there. All right, very good. So this is where you want to do your cross string. Right. Make sure there's no twist in it. And, and then with that one, you just 
barely snug that up. Just barely snug it up. You don't want to suck it in. Right. We're going to come back and put shims behind the fixing points. Yeah. Make sure it's nice and plumb this way as well. Sure. Okay. At this point, the top has to come out a little bit. So we'll have to tap some shims in there to bring that top out. Yep. You can actually see it. It is perfect um, because we did put the shims under that sill pan and get that sill pan nice and flat before we installed it. Did the work early. We'll get these jams uh, taken care of and then we can move to the sill and then the head. Great. Okay. On these, Josh, you can actually use uh, longer shims and, and, and insert them from both sides. Got it. Not like on the folding where we use the nail fin, um, but this is good in keeping that frame from rolling. Um, and you can just snap those shims off before you go ahead and put your backing rod in. Right. Okay, right there is good. Very good. So you've got your interior screw in, move to the exterior. A good point for any installation is when you're using shims. Yep. If they move, yep. you haven't used the shim. Right. So they got to be kind of snug still. Yep. Cut. All right. All right, so there's the jams. Let's give it one more check. That is perfect. And, it, and is, is there any and better? That is perfect. You want to check this way as well. You don't want any belly in the jam or you don't want it sucked in too far too. So that's why it's critical to use the shims at your fixing points and get that perfectly straight. Okay, well right, that's so, done. So we're gonna do the head and the sill. I'm gonna go along and pre-drill the holes uh, in the front installation screw tab. Then I'm gonna come back and actually countersink every hole as well because the installation screw is actually a flathead and we want that to sit in there nice and flush. Okay. Okay. Prior to putting the screw in, we need to fill the holes with cork and then surface cork at the, the head of the screw as well. Okay. Um, the reason why it's countersunk in there is because we have a bull nose piece that we actually click on the front right. and it needs to clear that screw. The bull nose conceals all the installation screws and creates a nice finish. Pre-drill, countersink, sealant, yes. screw, yep. bull nose. Exactly. That's a lot of steps, man. I'll be in the bathroom. It bores it out. So that sits below the countersink. It's going to be a nice flush finish. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go along here and do the rest of them. All right. So that's countersunk. It'd be great if you let's put some cork in there and uh, I'll put the screw in. So it's important to get it right down in that hole and then some on the surface. So as the screw goes in, it, the head beds in the cork. There you go. So let's just wipe that over the top. We want it to be flat for when we put the ball nose in. Got it. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do the rest. Get that head screwed off. Check it one, one more time to make sure there's no twist in it. And, we shim, and we shim here, up and up. We do shim here, yes. Okay. Yep. So Josh, it's really important that we keep that head track nice and flat. Yeah. So when the doors are riding in that, it doesn't bind. Right. Okay. All right. We are in. Still head jam jam. All done. Everything's screwed off now. It's nice and square, plumb and level. Yep. Before we put the doors in, we're going to put our gummy buffles in. Then would you please say it again? A gummy buffle. Buffle? It's a gummy buffle. Right. All right. You'll notice in the track here, on the outermost track, we have these blocks. Yeah. Okay. They're actually fixing blocks because that's where our fixed panel is going to go. Got it. Okay. So the two doors are going to telescope and slide behind this fixed panel. Okay. So before we do that, we want to make sure that we just create a really nice seal down here. Okay. So no water gets in. Okay. So we're going to apply some cork inside this opening. Now, it doesn't really matter if it's clear or white because you're not going to see it. Make sure you get the cork all around the joints 
and a little bit where that gummy buffle is going to sit. Okay. Now, it's actually a piece of foam, okay? It has this little notch in it. Mm -hmm. The notch goes in to the opening first, okay? So we're just gonna press that in and press it down into the cork, okay? And what that does is softens any blow. Oh no, it closes the... It actually just seals that corner from any water. Got it. It's just an added security. Okay. So we put one in the fixed panel and we also put one over in the active panel, the panel with the handle. You know this is the active panel because it actually has the keeper. Right, yep. Right. No, yep, put it all in there. We, Again, the, the notched part of the foam in first. We did a great job sealing this door because you can see it coming out through here. Right, and that's what you want to see. All that's going to be concealed anyway once you put your cover plates on. 